Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the one of the most important chess games in the history, the game of the century. And it's famous chess game played in 1956 by 13 years old boy, the future world champion Bobby Fischer against Donald Byrne in the Rosenwald Memorial Tournament in New York City. And why is it called the game of the century? Because Hans Kmoch in his chess review he called it the game of the century for very important reason and he wrote as follow the following game a stunning masterpiece of combination play performed by a boy of 13 against a formidable opponent matches the finest on record in the history of chess prodigies so uh, who was Donald Byrne? Because you can think that, okay, Bobby Fischer, we know already, even if he's 13 years old, then probably he's a uh, brilliant. But Donald Byrne uh, was one of the leading American chess masters. Uh, he won the 1953 US Open Championship and later he represented the United States in three chess Olympiads. Then he became international master and he could maybe reach more, but he, he had the uh, problems with health and he died when he was only 46 years old and uh, Bobby Fischer was at this time a promising junior facing one of the first real tests against the master level opposition and actually he didn't do well in this tournament Samuel Reshevsky won and Donald Byrne, the, the opponent of Bobby Fischer was the fifth uh, and he won with Reshevsky that's also interesting and Fischer got only 8 plays uh, out of 12, 12 players only played and Bobby Fischer lost 4 games uh, but among these 2 uh, games he managed to produce one of the most brilliant games of 20th century uh, and before I start the game I would like to show you the most precious artifact uh, of this tournament so here we go and maybe, according to Hans Kmoch, maybe it's not the most precious artifact of this tournament, maybe it's the most precious artifact of this century. So enjoy it for a while and uh, let's jump to the game. So we have Robert Fischer, a 13 years old boy uh, and he's ranking according to the chess metrics 2454 and he play as black and his opponent Donald Byrne 2584 that's his ranking 26 years old that's, that means much more experienced opponent and he opened with white knight f3 ready opening on the board and uh, it's very very flexible opening so anything can happen on the board uh, knight f6 answered by robbie fisher we have c4 g6 knight c3 and bishop g7 d4 by uh, burn and here uh, bobby fisher castle and now the most popular continuation would be bishop on g5 g3 and uh, e4 grabbing the center however we have bishop on f4 the less popular uh, opening uh, trying to get bobby fisher out of the book uh, as he has a less 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 experience so less popular system maybe would be uh, you know a good strategy against uh, Bobby Fischer uh, and here d6 we would have Queen's Indian defense uh, especially after e4 but d5 uh, it's Grunfeld defense uh, and here the most popular answer would be also uh, rook on c1 and after d takes d takes on c4 uh, e4 and bishop on g4 we would have this formation a uh, very strong center by white and black would just attack this center uh, the position would be equal it was reached many times however again uh, actually Donald Byrne play queen b3 is a Russian system in greenfield defense putting more pressure on d5 now this poor soldier is attacked three times and also the queen looks at the b7 square so um, the bishop at this moment can't just go and support so we have d takes on c4 with attack on the queen queen c4 and only now c6 as the pawn on c7 was attacked twice 
we have e4 grabbing the center and knight beyond d7 uh, by bobby fisher nowadays b5 would be played probably uh, as this is more active uh, gary kasparov in 1986 played that and after queen on b3 queen a5 and black has uh, quite active uh, counterplay however uh, fisher play knight b on d7 we have rook on d1 so supporting the center and knight on b6 with attack on the on the queen so with extra tempo uh, and here everybody would probably play just queen on b3 and after bishop on e6 queen c2 and white stands um, very good here or queen on d3 and after knight on h5 bishop can retreat to c1 as the rook is already developed in the center however we have queen on c5 so quite aggressive move um, putting the pressure on e7 we have bishop on g4 and now the best answer for white would be bishop on e2 with the castle that would be the best plan uh, however burn didn't want um, the idea of uh, after bishop on e2 just bobby fisher could play knight f on d7 with attack on the queen queen a3 and then e5 would attack the center knight e5 bishop on e2 uh, and after knight on e2 uh, knight e5 and uh, white actually would have doubled the pawns here so that's not the center um, donald burn imagine is the uh, dream one but this is pretty equal and that would be you know normal game so he wanted to prevent that um, that move uh, and this plan of bobby fisher so he played bishop on g5 and it makes sense because now knight f on d7 doesn't work because of this double attack on e7 however there is another problem here position of white uh, is pretty shaky because uh, white didn't develop the last piece and also didn't castle yet while black has uh, all pieces developed so what to do as black think as black analyze the position and what would be your plan um, to play as black so feel free to pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the only brilliant move uh which bobby fisher actually played is knight on a4 this is the move we are looking for so congratulations if you found it now what's the idea first of all uh attacking the queen of course so queen should be moved or uh, the attacker should be eliminated but if it's not then this e4 pawn is uh under attack as the only defender is moved from c3 so now what would happen if knight takes on a4 let's check knight e4 and now if queen e7 because queen is under attack then queen e7 we would have queen on a5 with attack on the king attack on the knight and also attack on the bishop and bishop is attacked twice so um this is the idea here now for now is defended twice but also one of the defenders would be very easily eliminated so here is all the idea so now b4 could be played attack the queen queen on a4 winning back the material but now queen on e4 winning the material again but the problem is rook f on e8 pinning the queen because king is still in the center that's the problem so bishop on e7 can be played uh, and now now after bishop on f3 attacking the queen something has to be done and white has the choice how to pick up this bishop the problem is it's like choice between holera and and the typhus uh, both of choices are wrong so uh, white can mess up the pawn structure or don't mess up the pawn structure the effect is a uh, very similar so queen on b4 with check and now after rook d2 rook e7 with check bishop on e2 and now bishop h6 with attack on the rook and of course it's it's winning if queen on d3 actually the simplest simplest way um, now everything is pinned to everything you see this these two pieces are pinned so if king move to d1 now black actually can exchange everything bishop on d2 queen on d2 queen on d2 and after picking up uh, black of course um, winning uh, with extra rook so that would not work queen is under attack and queen can't takes on e7 so maybe bishop takes on e7 
it also doesn't work simply because knight on c5, bishop on d8 and knight on a4. And now bishop on g5, so bishop can move, but now bishop f3, g takes on f3, knight on b2, and rook is under attack, so maybe rook on b1, but it also doesn't work, and white are down two pawns, and also look at this structure of pawns. Three pawns islands uh, against uh, very beautiful uh, chains uh, by black, so two extra pawns enough to win the game. Uh, and also in this situation, uh, the last try, uh, queen on c1, queen on c1 defending the bishop on uh, g5. It also doesn't work because bishop on f3 eliminating the, the defender, g takes on f3 and now of course queen a5 with triple attack on the king and on the bishop and knight. So um, that just doesn't work. Knight c3 and uh, picking up the, the bishop and of course uh, black stand much better with only one extra pawn, but it, now it's even four pawn island, so very difficult to defend. And uh, this is why in this position, a knight shouldn't be taken. And the only move is queen a3. Queen a3 still keeping the pressure on e7. Uh, and here we have knight on c3 as planned. B takes on c3. If queen takes on uh, c3, it's actually losing the piece. Uh, if queen takes on c3, it, it looks very bad because now uh, white would not have any counterplay. But uh, it's also losing the piece because knight e4, now we have attack. And we know already uh, the queen has to be on this diagonal, otherwise we have this, this attack. But still, a5 forcing the, the, the attack on e7, and we already know that this doesn't work. Bishop on f3, g takes on f3, and now knight g5 winning the piece. So, uh, of course, that would not work. And also, if queen on d8, it also doesn't work, because rook a on d8, and uh, bishop d8, but now this bishop also can pick up on d1. Uh, bishop b6, bishop a4, and uh, in this position, of course, uh, extra minor piece is enough to win. So uh, this is why b takes on c3 is the only answer. And now finally, Bobby Fischer can pick up on e4, or can he? Because now we have this attack on e7. Actually, Bobby Fischer can, and he did. Knight on e4 was played. We have bishop on e7 attacking the rook and the queen, and queen on b6. And here we have situation where Bern have choice pick up the rook or maybe uh, maybe better to develop the last piece and hide the king he chose bishop on c4 which was a quite right choice because after bishop on f8 uh, this now is analyzed by uh, bobby fisher himself he showed this continuation uh, bishop on f8 with attack on the queen we have queen on b3 and now knight on c3 very strong move of course a knight can't be taken because uh, white would lose the, the queen, so queen on b6, a on b6, and now rook a1. We would have not picking up the, the pawn, but rather rook on e8 with check, king d2, knight on e4 with check, king c2, knight f2 with attack on the rook, and now bishop f5, and black stands much better. The pieces are more active, there are two extra pawns, and, and the prize was the exchange, but black pieces are just more active and would easily win this game. Uh, so this is why bishop on c4 was played by Burn, and now we have another great move by Bobby Fischer, and so feel free to pause the video and find the continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, so black actually can play uh, qu quite some moves. So rook f on e8 is of course a good one. Bishop on f3 is a good one, but absolutely the best is knight takes on c3. And the point is this file is now very vulnerable for attack and the king is not yet um, hidden in the, in the corner. So if queen takes on c3, we would have rook f on e8 and after castle, just rook on e7 and black stands uh, much better because have extra pawn and these pawns are not easy to defend. So this is why Donald Byrne didn't take this knight 
and he play bishop on c5 first and then pick up the knight later. The problem is Bobby Fischer play rook f on e8 with check, which was expected. And now if king on d2, and then there is the problem knight e4 with attack on the king and, uh, and on the attacker uh, of the queen. So that would not work. Uh, now bishop h6, king c2, and now knight c5. If queen c5, then we would have bishop f5 check first. Uh, king c3 and now queen c7 very silent move and very strong move now the queen gonna be trapped and uh, white gonna have the problems if queen is moved then we would have b5 b4 with check open the position and queen would just um, be lost or king uh, would be checkmated so that would not be the option this is why in this position king f1 was played and now the most spectacular move is coming so feel free to pause the video and and Take as much time as you want and try to find really, really the best move in this position while I really enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So if you find knight on b5 with attack on the on the queen actually doesn't work and interesting that Bobby Fischer showed why it doesn't work because after bishop on f7, uh, that would be the problem. Uh, and after picking up the, the, the bishop, we would have queen on b3, escaping from this attack. And now bishop e6 also doesn't work because knight g5 with the fork. So uh, king g8, knight e6, knight d4 with attack on the queen. Uh, the problem is knight d4, uh, queen on b3, knight on b3, and white has one extra piece for the pawn so that would not work uh, the move we are looking for are you ready it's bishop on e6 bishop e6 attacking the bishop but also sacrificing the queen and now what to do as white here is the problem if bishop takes on e6 I think everybody see that it's it's really enjoyable queen on b5 with check and king actually has to move uh, on g1 and we would have knight on e2 king f1 and that would be the most beautiful checkmate it's called smothered mate or philidor mate and everybody loves it of course and everybody enjoy it especially if we do smothered mate not if the smothered mate is made to us but yeah, that would happen if uh, bishop takes on e6. So definitely Donald Byrne didn't play that. And if he play queen on c3, it would be much better. Probably queen on c3. The problem is queen c5. Now queen c5, that's the move. And exchanging the queens. So d takes on c5 and bishop takes on c3. And after exchanging on e6, Black would have just extra pawn, but also uh, this pawn would fall very, very fast. And it's impossible to defend that. So uh, black would have extra two pawns and easy win. Uh, this is why Donald Byrne didn't play that. Maybe slightly better chances for white would happen after bishop on d3, but it's still very difficult. Knight on b5 with attack on the queen. Uh, so just exchanging the queens and after bishop on c5, knight c4. Uh, the game, it still can continue. Maybe this pawn is slightly better now to defend, but it's still not so easy for, for white. So the game would continue. It would be a very long game, but the problem is it would never be called the game of the century. This is why, maybe this is why, or maybe not, um, Donald Byrne just take the queen and she accepted the sacrifice challenging 13 years old boy. Uh, okay, show me what you have. And uh, Bobby Fischer first play bishop on c4 with check, king g1. And now we have something what is called windmill in chess. And usually windmill works uh, well when we have bishop and the rook. But in this case, bishop uh, cooperates with the knight and it also works very nice. So we have knight on e2 with check, king f1 and knight picks up the 
uh, pawn on d4 with check now it's a um, discovered check and king can do anything because this rook is placed uh, just perfectly so king on g1 we have knight on e2 uh, king f1 and knight on c3 with check and attack on the rook and now Th this windmill works perfectly because even um, in this situation actually uh, if you ask rook on d3 could save from from you know uh, from this craziness but actually it doesn't and it doesn't because a b6 uh, attacking the queen so if queen moves on c3 then we would have knight on f3 and what to do now now checkmate is coming so uh, queen is under attack what to do now uh, queen has to move somewhere on this diagonal so for example queen on b4 but now bishop on d3 and this is also checkmate by the bishop so uh white actually can't you know uh, prevent two two checkmates um this is why after uh knight on d4 we had the king on g1 uh, and then knight e2 king f1 and knight c3 attack on the rook we have king g1 again and now you can tell me what is better than pick up the the rook so the answer is better than pick up the rook is pick up the rook and the minor piece so a takes on b6 picking up the bishop and now queen is under attack uh, and queen actually can't defend the rook if queen try to um, at, uh, defend the rook uh, queen d6 now uh, we would have knight on d1 queen on d1 and rook a2 this is analyzed by fisher and this is continuation showed by fisher of course uh, rook a1 is coming pinning the the queen and uh, winning the game and nothing can be done about that if the queen is moved from the last rank then we would have checkmate and uh, also nothing can be done here uh, so this is why Donald Byrne play queen on b4. We have rook and a4, another brilliant move. And now look how the pieces of black uh, are coordinated. This bishop defends the knight, knight defends the rook, rook defends the bishop and also rook attacks the queen. So queen has to do something. Uh, queen if defends the, the rook, uh, I show you already that continuation, nothing changed here. Queen b6 was played in the game and knight d1. So now black pick up the, the rook and let's check the situation on the board. What's going on here? both sides has the rooks and also both sides has the uh, knights and now uh, four pawns against five pawns uh, so we have a queen against pair of bishop and the rook and the pawn so definitely black stands better and also all the black pieces are more active let's back to the game we have h3 uh, making a space for the king rook a2 so robert fisher just uh, pick up more material king h2 with the attack on on the knight so knight f2 and now rook e1 uh, asking black to exchange the rooks and of course uh, fisher accept that uh, it's he has uh, a lot of advantage so that's good for him queen d8 with check bishop f8 and now we have knight on e1 and now a uh, queen and the knight uh, are not coordinated at all and black pieces are slightly less coordinated than before but fisher gonna uh, you know uh, make it happen again so bishop on d5 now bishop is uh, protected by the pawn uh, so everything is fine it's centralized and also keeping an eye on g2 we have knight on f3 so bringing the the knight to the uh, to the game and now we have have knight on e4 by fisher and white actually has nothing to play we have queen on b8 attacking the pawn on b7 uh, but now simply b5 and burn also try to find something any counterplay so he play h4 uh, with the intention of playing h5 but fisher just calmly responded h5 so no counterplay for burn at all we have knight on e5 with the idea of maybe attacking the the bishop but the problem is king g7 and now this bishop is very dangerous but because uh, unfortunately the queen and the kings are the same diagonal so um, 
white would just lose the queen so a king on g1 was played and now we have bishop on c5 with check uh, king f1 if king h1 then we would have very uh, very fast checkmate so uh, king h2 uh, and now uh, this would be very beautiful checkmate by the bishop so this is why Donald Byrne play king on f1 and actually he could resign but um, it was you know very very wonderful game and he wanted it to uh, end it with the checkmate very fair play uh, so let's see how it happened we had the knight on g3 with check and now of course uh, the king has to move uh, to b1 so let's see how that happened king on e1 we have bishop on b4 king on d1 bishop on b3 king on c1 knight e2 with check king b1 and now knight on c3 with check king on c1 and rook on c2 with checkmate and here one more story uh, because in the interview after the game bobby fisher was asked uh, how he was able to bring of such a brilliant win and fisher answered I just made the moves I told were best. I was just lucky. So if you have no idea, you know, how to win in chess, just make the moves you think are the best and maybe you're gonna be lucky. So if you like this video, press like in for some reason, but I don't believe I cannot find any reason you don't like this game, press on like and leave the comment what games you would like to see because there are a lot of famous games in chess history which I would like to share, but which one you choose, I would like you to help me with that. And uh, of course, subscribe and press the bell button if you don't want to miss any of these stories. And for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.